structures are usually superficial and uh, the overlying soft tissues are mobile and compressible. So, and also due to the structure, it is, uh, the circumferential accessibility of the knee is easier and uh, we can easily visualize with ultrasound. Here in this diagram, I have shown a linear probe, high frequency linear probe, uh, which uh, ranges from 5 to 20 megahertz. And uh, in cases of knee pain procedures, we uh, apply an in-plane technique. And uh, the diagram here again shows uh, in-plane technique. Uh, all of us uh, already know, but again. So the in case of in-plane in technique, uh, the entire needle can be visualized uh, with the the linear probe. Our main aim would be to keep the needle and the USG probe in a way so that we can see the needle, uh, see it, let us guide to our target structure. So uh, some added advantages of ultrasound uh, procedures is that it can be, it's beneficial in cases of obese patients. And uh, again, if we are following a landmark based technique, uh, the outcome of ultrasound guided technique is much much better. So it increases the specificity, it, uh, it's much safer because we can uh, avoid injecting anything into the vessels and uh, precise targeting can be possible with ultrasound. Uh, but again, it is a new branch, it's upcoming and more studies are needed to back this up. So, uh, my presentation, I'll be covering uh, some basic knee conditions and uh, the use of ultrasonography in treating these conditions. So, uh, some common procedures, some of us, we are already doing it. So, ultrasound guided intra-articular knee injections are uh, targeted through various approaches. Second is uh, regenerative medicine uh, tried uh, with ultrasound uh, in cases of ligament injuries. Uh, then treating bursitis, and that is injection of uh, local anesthetic and uh, steroids, corticosteroids for uh, treatment of bursitis, inflammatory conditions. Uh, some peripheral nerve blocks. Uh, peripheral nerve block is, even though it is, uh, doesn't come under uh, chronic pain management, it is mainly for uh, acute pain management in the post-operative cases and also in cases of trauma. So ultrasound is uh, obviously a, a great modality to help us in peripheral nerve blocks. And uh, finally, uh, our uh, treatment of interest, uh, treatment of osteoarthritis, the later stages of osteoarthritis, as a palliative measure, we can uh, use ultrasonography uh, to do regular nerve ablation techniques. So now we'll be going through each uh, topic. So first is in general, we should know that uh, in cases of uh, intra-articular knee injections, we use ultrasound uh, uh, to give visco supplementation and PRP, uh, platelet-rich plasma therapy. And so, uh, this particular study has uh, again uh, said that ultrasound, uh, ultrasound guided knee hyaluronic acid uh, uh, injection has been more successful and were significantly less likely to undergo subsequent knee arthroplasty. So basically we can avoid total uh, knee replacement if we are doing a, a hyaluronic acid injection. So these are the few uh, approaches that I was talking about. Uh, some of it, uh, these approaches we are already practicing. So first is the uh, in-plane ultrasound guided knee injection through a lateral suprapatellar approach. So here a study was done. All the procedures were done under strict aseptic precautions. And the probe was placed in an oblique position in, and the injection was done from a lateral uh, approach where the, uh, the probe, if you see here in the diagram, it has been placed above the patella. So it's a suprapatellar rhesus approach. Uh, and uh, the patient is lying so fine with uh, the hip in the neutral position. And the most important thing here is the knee has been flexed at 30 to 45 uh, degrees of knee flexion. Uh, now, the second one is a medial patellar retroconvolacular approach. Uh, a study was conducted uh, where a comparison of sonographically guided intra-articular knee injections at three different sites were done. So here we are talking, this particular study, we are talking about three approaches. Uh, one is the mid-lateral portal, 
uh, which uh, shows the success of about 95%. Second is the superolateral portal, which almost gives a success rate of uh, around 100%. And these two has been shown to be superior uh, in terms of outcomes than the medial portal, which uh, gives an outcome of around 75 percent. Uh, so here we see the medial parapetalar transverse scan. We are holding the linear probe in this direction, and the yellow arrow there uh, would show the medial trajectory. Uh, will be we are seeing two bone bony surfaces. One is the patella and the femur and in between we are seeing the uh, we are crossing our needle will be crossing through the medial patellar retinaculum and then we reach the joint recess and that is where we uh, give our PRP and hyaluronic acid. So uh, through the posterior posterior medial approach this is another approach uh, by which we can give intraarticular injections. This particular approach, uh, the study conducted, uh, was conducted and it showed that uh, this particular approach is particularly uh, effective in case of obese patient to visualize the joint recess. And also in case of Baker cyst, we can uh, use this posterior medial approach. So uh, Baker cyst, uh, one of the, the most common causes of Baker cyst is uh, collection of effusion in cases of osteoarthritic changes in the knee. So in that case, in these cases, the effusion collects over the posterior aspect, and it is uh, usually seen to be arising from the gastrocnemius and semimembranosus uh, versa. So this particular diagram here shows uh, the, uh, when we place the linear probe on the posterior aspect uh, near the popliteal crease, we see uh, that the Baker cyst is here. The longitudinal image of the medial aspect of the popliteal fossa is showing the Baker cyst here. Uh, there are uh, it's mostly aneuploid uh, uh, sac and with some little bit of uh, hyperechoic foci in between due to the osteoarthritic changes problem. And uh, another, uh, the next diagram shows that uh, there was when we uh, use a power Doppler here, we didn't see any kind of uh, vascularity uh, present in the cyst. And the third one shows uh, how we are approaching the Baker cyst to uh, to remove the effusion. Uh, that there the shiny structure shows the needle present. Now uh, this is another novel technique that we uh, have started with the idea and uh, we are uh, applying this. So this particular approach, uh, the proposition has been described here. So we need, for this particular approach, we need uh, the help of another assistant who would be pushing the patella from one, the medial end and will be placing our uh, linear probe on the lateral side. This uh, is helpful when there is minimal effusion present. So, in cases of uh, inflammatory arthritis, uh, and uh, the, if you see, sometimes there is minimal effusion. Effusion is not so much. Usually, the suprapatellar approach that we were doing, uh, the traditional one that we were using, it is helpful when there is a lot of effusion present. So, when minimal effusion is present, we do not flex the knee at 30 to 45 degree. We keep the knee straight. Uh, we ask our uh, helper to uh, push the uh, the patella from the medial end and uh, we can easily give the intraarticular injection. So indication for this is uh, minimal effusion and also in cases of uh, synovial hypertrophy. In those cases we are not able to see the joint recess properly. So this is the ultrasound uh, scan image where we can see the subcutaneous fat, the skin subcutaneous tissue then the retinaculum uh, through which we will be piercing and uh, piercing the fat layer and then finally reaching the joint recess. And here in this diagram we are seeing synovial hypertrophy uh, and the, the shiny cartilage, uh, the bony surface and above that the cartilage is also present. So uh, coming to the next topic now, ultrasound guided knee ligament injury pr procedures. Uh, so in cases of partial tear, um, or in cases of non-retracted tears, so it has to be uh, the ligament uh, after an injury, the, uh, the both ends of the ligament uh, which has undergone the injury should be still in contact with each other. So in those cases only PRP works or, or any regenerative uh, therapy works. So uh, using ultrasound we can better visualize the structures and we are able to uh, give the injection. 
Here, the study was done to see um, anterior cruciate ligament uh, injection being done. And uh, usually, um, ACL injuries are due to hyperextension and contact injury due, due to direct uh, valgus force on the, when the leg is planted. And the green arrows here shows uh, the needle trajectory. So basically, uh, once the probe is placed, we can either approach it from up or down uh, in an in-plane technique. So this is the anatomy showing the uh, the diagram showing the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament. Uh, we see that the posterior uh, cruciate ligament has two pockets. One is the Risberg portion and the Humphreys portion. Uh, when we are placing our probe, uh, we'll be able to visualize part of the TCL. Uh, we should uh, one thing before doing any knee intervention. It is very important uh, that if possible, we should back our USG findings along with an MRI because one MRI scan would give us the exact uh, extent of tear. So it's very important to do that. So PCL repair, for in cases of PCL tear, it has been seen that uh, PCL injuries is, are less common than the ACL injuries uh, and in case of a high kinetic chain injury. So in, uh, for example, uh, car dashboard injuries, only then we see PCL uh, and uh, this particular study showed uh, that ultrasonographically, uh, if we are uh, visualizing the PCL, uh, we get better outcome. So here is another diagram showing the same. Uh, so the PCL, we play, place our uh, linear probe from the back of uh, the, uh, at around the popliteal fossa. Uh, we see the bones here and uh, uh, the PCL has been visualized just above the TV. Next is uh, medial collateral and lateral collateral ligament. Uh, so uh, the, the, the diagram shows here, uh, we know that medial collateral ligament injuries are more common than LCL uh, injuries and it is due to various, uh, various type of injury. And uh, we see two bone, bony structures, femur and tibia. And uh, we see uh, the medial meniscus and also the LCL, the medial collateral ligament. And uh, that is our probe position there. And for lateral collateral ligament, uh, we should one thing we should note is when we are placing our uh, linear probe from the lateral aspect, there are two things that we should take care. So one, if we keep our uh, probe on top of the girdle tubercle, uh, we will be able to visualize uh, the iliotibial band. And when the same probe is placed a little more laterally, and if we are able to visualize the fibular head. That will be our LCL. So two main structures uh, being approached from the lateral aspect when we are keeping the probe. Uh, a clear difference has to be made when visualizing. So uh, this study again shows uh, the meniscus, uh, the sonographically guided uh, knee meniscus uh, injections there. Feasibility techniques and uh, validation have already discussed this. Uh, so uh, now the separate, uh, the separate bursa injection. So, here, uh, these are the uh, common conditions where bursitis can occur and once we have visualized the bursa, we, uh, we can easily uh, target uh, that area and uh, you know, give local anesthetic and uh, steroid in this area. So suprapatellar bursitis, prepatellar bursitis are commonly known as housemate's knee. Then uh, pes anserine bursitis, deep infrapatellar bursitis or clergyman's knee. Jumpers knee or patellar tendinosis. If this is not uh, bursitis, but uh, we can uh, apply ultrasound to uh, see this area. So semi-membranosis bursitis injection. We uh, see the structure and uh, give local anesthetic and steroid here. Next is uh, iliotibial band syndrome that I have already mentioned. Uh, uh, placing the linear probe from the lateral aspect, we can target this. Uh, this was uh, for post-operative pain management and uh, also for in cases of trauma, we uh, use ultrasound guided popliteal nerve block. This is mostly for anesthetic purposes. Now, uh, next is uh, the genicular nerve ablation techniques that we do for cases of uh, grade 3 or more than grade 3, uh, grade 4 arthritis. And uh, we uh, commonly do this procedure to, uh, to visualize the genicular artery. And once we visualize the artery, we uh, target the nerves. 
Um, even though there are a lot of uh, genetic variations present, uh, we have seen that superomedial genicular nerve, superolateral genicular nerve, and inframedial genicular nerve, these are the conventionally, these three nerves are targeted. There are genetic, uh, genetic variations. Uh, so, the, here I am talking about some other nerves uh, which should also uh, be targeted in case of uh, radio frequency if we want to get a better uh, uh, outcome for the osteoarthritis knee. So, adductor tunnel block can be additionally done if we are doing uh, uh, cool RF or cryo ablation. Uh, to target the saphenous nerve, uh, recurrent peroneal nerve and uh, recurrent or recurrent fibular nerve is also targeted. Lateral patellar retinocular nerve, uh, infrapatellar nerve, and branches from uh, nerve to uh, vastus medialis and uh, vastus lateralis. These are the additional nerves which uh, supply the joint knee joint capsule. So, other than conventionally uh, targeting those three nerves along with the arteries which we know, which uh, so the superomedial, the, uh, the inferomedial genicular nerve and the superolateral genicular nerve, usually we place the linear probe, we place, we place the linear probe uh, at the diaphysis and uh, metaphysis junction. We see the artery pulsating right on top of the periosteum and that's, that is the area where we place our uh, RF needle and uh, we admit the nerve. Uh, we should also keep in mind the other five nerves which are also supplying the joint capsule. Uh, so this is the diagram showing the, the knee joint capsule supply and uh, that uh, brings an end to the lecture. Most of my diagrams have been taken from this book. Uh, thank you.